Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lena. If you guys are new, I would love for you guys to subscribe if you haven't already. I make fashion, beauty, and lifestyle videos on this channel, and I would love for you guys to be a part of this community. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my best and worst luxury purchases. I really like to mix high-end and low-end on this channel because that's kind of the way that I dress in real life. I mix affordable items with my higher-end accessories. I really like to spend my money and invest in accessories like bags and shoes that will really go with all of my outfits I can wear from season to season for years to come I don't just go out and buy like the newest thing all the time I really am very selective in the pieces that I buy so I really hope that this video is helpful to any of you guys who have questions about any of the designer items that I have because I do get questions about my bags and shoes and whether they are worth it or not so I'm just gonna kind of give you guys a little mini review of all of the pieces that I own thank you so much to Lily Silk for sponsoring today's video if you guys haven't heard of Lily Silk. They are an online retailer that specializes in all things silk. They sell everything from clothing to pajamas to bedding. Everything is just so luxurious and beautiful and classic. I'm going to be sharing with you guys a few of my favorite pieces and then we will get into my best and worst luxury purchases. The first piece I want to share is the silk sleeveless blouse that I'm wearing underneath my blazer. So this is such a huge closet staple. I find the need for tops like this all the time. I think that it will go with so so many different looks. I love that it's high neck and it's sleeveless. So during the summer, this is a really nice breathable fabric. And the fact that it doesn't have sleeves, you don't have extra layers. So you can layer this underneath blazers or dusters or whatever layering piece you have on top. And I just think it's just such a classic staple for your wardrobe. The next piece that I want to share is this designer inspired blazer. I think you guys are going to love this. This is such like a huge fraction of the price of the real one. And it is so so beautiful and so flattering and I just feel like it's just as beautiful as the real thing it's amazing quality I love the buttons on the sleeves and these kind of like thicker shoulder pads that just really like accentuate your shoulders and then it kind of like tapers in at your waist it's so beautiful I'm wearing the beige color I just thought this color was more seasonally appropriate and I really just love this color as well this one I think would be gorgeous in the fall winter time so such a beautiful blazer. The next piece I fell in love with is this silk blouse that's in this gorgeous like nudie pink color. It has this tie around the neck and this beautiful pearl gold like little clasp detail. It's so unique and I feel like you could wear this like in an office setting or you can dress this up for dinner. It's just so beautiful. You could also wear this with jeans and kind of like dress it down. It's just such a classic item and I think it's so feminine and classic. The next piece I got from Lily Silk is a silk pillowcase. I am so excited to put these on our pillows and start using them. There are so many benefits to sleeping on a silk pillowcase. They're really like, since they're such a smooth material, they don't pull at your skin, so they prevent wrinkles. They prevent hair breakage. They are not like a moisture absorbing material. So it's not like a cotton, like the fibers are a lot closer together. So they're not going to like dry out your skin or your hair. There's just so many benefits to using one of these. So I am so obsessed. I just got the white to match our bedding, but I'm so excited to use these. I will leave all of my favorite Lily Silk items down below in the description box along with my discount code if you guys are interested. So let's go ahead and move on to my best and worst luxury purchases. Okay, the first piece that I want to talk about is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull in the MM size and the Damier Ebene pattern. I have used this bag so many times. Since it's in the canvas material, it's not, I don't think it's actually real leather. So honestly, it is the most durable material and it still looks brand spanking new. And I have had this for at least, have I had this for three years so far? Anyways, I've had it for several years so far and it looks like the exact same as it did whenever I got it. And I have traveled with this thing. I have taken this to to so many different countries, so many airports, it's been everywhere and it still looks the exact same. It's on the lower end in like price points wise, so it's honestly an amazing bag to like just start out with if you're starting your luxury collection. The one downside to this bag that I will say is that when it does get like super heavy, if I was like putting my laptop or cameras or whatever in here, the straps are kind of thin, so whenever I have it on my shoulder, it kind of like digs into my shoulder and that's like a little bit uncomfortable. So that's like really the only thing that I would say that I don't like about this bag, but then 
and again the thinner straps is kind of like what gives it like such a beautiful look i don't think it would look as nice if it had like thicker straps i also really love the ballerine i think that's what it's called ballerine color on the inside it's like a really pretty blush pink and i also got this insert for it from amazon that helps keep its shape i think that that is one of the main reasons that i've kept this bag looking so nice is because of that insert it really just helps keeps its shape no matter how much stuff i have in there this bottom part never looks like saggy or anything like that this is definitely one of my best purchases the next bag that i want to talk about is the chloe drew bag i have abstract white in the small size and there's a couple of reasons why i don't wear this bag as much as i used to even though i absolutely love the look of this bag and it truly fits my personal style i'll get into kind of like the reasons why i don't get as much use out of it anymore i love the color it's this beautiful beautiful creamy color it's not like a white white and i love the gold hardware and this beautiful delicate gold chain it just makes it so easy to dress up or down and it is pretty roomy like the inside i can fit my phone keys not a huge wallet but i mean you can fit like all of your like necessities in there i'm the type of person that i really don't carry that much with me on a daily basis i don't usually carry my like louis vuitton never full tote around town if i do there's all that I have in there is like my phone, keys, wallet, like, and it's just like mostly empty. So a bag this size is a lot more practical for me personally. But the reasons why I don't really get that much use out of it is first of all, the gold paint on the front, it just completely chipped, like a huge part of it just chipped off. And I'm really not like that hard wearing on this bag in particular at all. I usually would just save it for like dinners or like special occasions and so for it to do that really disappointed me the other thing is is the like the clasp to open it it's just a little awkward just having to put that little stick in there and then like having it dangle that's kind of the reason why i don't get as much use out of this one anymore the next bag that i want to talk about is the chloe nile bag in the color biscotti beige i am obsessed with this bag this is just me in a bag the color is this beautiful like blush nude it matches literally every single outfit i feel like a lot of people use this more for a summer bag but i love it all year round because it just literally matches all of my outfits the only thing that i will say is that it's really not that practical of a bag it really doesn't fit all that much in there it's so tiny it does fit my phone but only at an angle i have the 11 pro not the max just the 11 pro and i have to like angle my phone and it does kind of like slide in other than my phone lip gloss and just like a tiny card holder or just like slide your credit card in there or something it really like barely holds anything other than that i have worn this for special occasions i really love like the bracelet style that you can wear it kind of like as a beautiful little dainty like bracelet bag or it has the crossbody strap you can wear it crossbody and i just i just think it's so beautiful and really elevates all of my different outfits not the most practical but it really does make me happy so this is one of my best <laughs> next piece that i am so sad to say is one of my regrets is the dior patent nude sling back pumps i will link all these items down below for you guys to look through the only reason that these are a regret for me is because they are so uncomfortable and i okay i will be honest with you guys i have wide feet if any of you guys have these shoes let me know down below if they are comfortable for you or not because i have heard other people say that they are comfortable because the heel height is actually a great heel height it's very low i don't like to spend money on super uncomfortable shoes <laughs> I, so i thought that this would be a really practical heel height but i wore these to an event i think i was at the event for maybe like three or four hours and i have never had this experience before where my feet were they literally went numb for hours so maybe if you have more slender feet you wouldn't have any problems with these shoes but i personally did and that just really scared me so i haven't worn them again the patent leather is more of a durable material but the slingback part i could see getting a lot more wear and looking old after a while if you wore these a lot i do think they are a stunning stunning shoe i just really found them uncomfortable and that's why they are a regret for me the next bag that i want to talk about is my chanel mini flap bag i think it's called the square flap in caviar leather this is a vintage bag that i purchased off of a website called portero i got this bag i think it was like maybe five years ago it was kind of like earlier on when i started my blog i think i made this purchase because i thought like if i'm gonna be a blogger then i want my outfits to look 
super high end and the only way that I'm gonna be able to do that is if I have a classic Chanel bag, a black Chanel that's just like the ultimate classic bag. Honestly, like I love this bag, but I don't wear a lot of black. I wasn't considering my own personal style and how it would work with all of the different outfits that I have. So that is something that I always take into consideration now. I made this purchase thinking that like this was gonna be like a closet staple. It mainly sits on my shelf. So I want to say that it's a regret. However, this is my only black bag. And whenever I do have outfits that requires a black bag, which is mostly in like the fall winter time, I will always reach for this one because this is a classic and I can dress this up or down. And honestly, it is a really nice closet staple to have. Personally, I think I would have been better off getting more of like a cream color or a beige so that I could wear it more often because I really just don't get the wear out of it. I also want to mention the lambskin leather. Did I say caviar earlier? I don't know if I said caviar or lambskin, but this is definitely a lambskin bag and it is very delicate. So if I was to like scratch my fingernail over this bag, it would definitely make a mark and it would just completely ruin the bag. So I have to be very careful with it. I think if I was to ever get another Chanel bag, I would consider the caviar. Even though I really prefer the look of the lambskin more, I just think it looks like more shiny and just more luxurious i don't know but the caviar is definitely something that will be more of a practical material for daily use i think i'm keeping this bag because it's just such a classic it does match the outfits that i wear black with and it's something that i maybe could pass down to my daughter one day since it is such a classic so those are my thoughts on this one the next piece that i want to talk about is my gucci logo belt and i am so torn about whether this was like a regret or like a best purchase for me because I did get a lot of wear out of this. However, I just really think that these Gucci logo belts had such a huge moment that now that it's kind of like dying down, I feel like they kind of were like such a trend piece that they really aren't like in style anymore. This is just kind of my personal opinion and this is not dissing anyone who has this belt. I'm just kind of worried that it was kind of like a trend piece. So that's kind of why I don't reach for it as much anymore. That's honestly the reason why I got this other belt, which I know a lot of you guys have probably seen me wearing on my channel and on my Instagram. I actually got this closer to the time I found out that I was pregnant because I love the look of belts with pregnancy outfits. And this was really my only belt that I had that was like a nice belt that would match all of my outfits. Fits, but I was really worried that this Gucci logo would be so out of style one day that I would look back on all my pregnancy photos and I was going to be wearing this Gucci belt in like all of my outfits and anyways I got this one this is the Gucci horse bit belt and I think this is such a more of a classic piece because it doesn't have the Gucci logo unless you really knew you wouldn't like necessarily know that this is Gucci I love the white color with the gold it matches every single one of my outfits that's why I've gotten so much wear out of it especially during pregnancy because it's super flattering with the bump like I said I still love my Gucci logo belt but I just don't wear it as much because I'm really worried it's going out of style so that's kind of my thoughts on those two belts. Okay, the next few pieces that I'm going to talk about are my Valentino Rockstead sandals and I have one pair of flats. I'm just gonna group these into kind of like one category because I have three different ones and I absolutely love and do not regret buying any of them. These are my newest purchase. These are the flat caged sandals in the color Poudre or Poudre, I don't know how to pronounce that, but they're like a really nice pinky nude. I have the block heel caged sandals and I'm not exactly sure what color this is labeled as, but it's like a really pretty bronze color. And then these I've had the longest. These are the caged pointed toe flats and they are in the Poudre patent leather. So the patent leather is going to be so much more durable than more of like the softer leathers. I've had these the longest and they have the least amount of wear because they are that patent material. I mean, you can definitely see that I've worn them so much, but the leather still looks brand new and I feel like I can continue wearing these for years to come. I am definitely a flats kind of girl, so I really love wearing these to special occasions, even to weddings. I mean, most of the time I'm wearing like long maxi dresses anyway so all you really see is the pointed toe and I never have problems like when I'm dancing or walking or on my feet for long periods of time so with the other two Valentino sandals I have they're more of like that softer leather they're not the patent so I am seeing more signs of wear around like the block heel like some scratches same with the sandal flats I'm already seeing a little bit of scuffing at the very tips which is kind of sad because like I said they're like my newest pair and they're already a little bit of scuffing. I have to be a little bit more careful with these, but 
nonetheless they are so stunning and match all of my summer outfits and I'm super happy to have them in my collection the next bag that I want to talk about is my Gucci Marmont small flat bag in the color nude <laughs> I think that's the name of it I love this bag I do have mixed thoughts on it now so I will kind of just give you guys my full review I wore this bag practically every single day last year it was just like my everyday bag and i was so rough with it you guys like i just trashed this bag honestly i don't know why i did that because i'm not usually that bad with my things but i don't know it's just such a durable bag that i just felt like no matter how much i trashed it it just never really looked that bad honestly when you look at it in person you can really like see the wear but like from far away or pictures or just like on camera i feel like you can't really even tell that it's in that bad of condition even leo chewed on it a little bit and i didn't really even care <laughs> as far as like the hardware goes i am seeing absolutely no chipping whatsoever the one thing i do notice is that the top part looks a little bit more pointy because i like to wear it cross body a lot that's another thing that's really good about this bag is that you can wear it a ton of different ways. You can wear it crossbody. You can double up the straps and wear it shoulder over your shoulder. Um, you can wear it in the crook of your arm. It's just a really comfortable and practical, easy bag to wear on a daily basis. I would say it's more of like a mauve tone. It has like a hint of purpley in it. Just so you guys know, it's more of like that tone of nude. I also love the small size. I think the small is just the perfect everyday bag size the medium size just seemed way too big for me i just didn't think i was going to need that much space in my bag i kind of have the same thoughts about this bag that i do about the logo gucci belt i'm just scared that since this bag had such a huge moment and so many people had this bag it just feels like it was kind of a trend bag i do feel like i definitely got my cost per wear <laughs> like i wore this bag to death and it's still in pretty good condition like i could still wear it i'm just not reaching for it as much because i'm scared it's just not as classic as i thought it was going to be the next bag i want to talk about is my chloe test bag i think it comes in different sizes but this is the smallest one this color i'm not exactly sure what it's labeled as but it's like a really pretty chestnut brown i got this bag on farfetch very close to the time that it launched and at the time this color was very hard to find i'm not sure if it's still hard to find this color but if i can find it i will link it for you guys down below i'm not the type of person that really usually like as soon as a bag is released i just go and buy it but whenever i saw this bag i knew that it had my name written all over it it just looked super classic it doesn't have like a lot of branding or logos or anything just like my other chloe bag that's kind of why I love Chloe. They're not like in your face loud, like super designer logos, but they still give you that really high end look to your outfit. So that's why I really love Chloe. I love the gold hardware, but it also has some touches of silver hardware on this bag as well. So you could really mix and match your metals, I feel like, when you wear this bag. The roominess on the inside is much better than the Nile. It's a little bit wider, and I can definitely fit my phone in there perfectly fine, along with a card holder and other essentials. The leather doesn't really have any signs of wear or scratches or anything on it at all and I haven't been super careful with this bag and I don't see any signs of like chipping on the paint on the hardware. This bag has held up really well. It does come with a crossbody strap. It's kind of a thicker, bulkier strap. I guess that's not like my favorite part of the bag, but I really do still love it and I still wear it. I get a little bit more wear out of it in the fall winter time just because of like the brown tones. I like those in the fall. It's my really only brown bag. So whenever I'm wearing like brown shoes or I have more brown tones in my outfit this always just matches and just elevates the look the next couple of purchases that I want to talk about are some regrets these are the Stuart Weitzman over the knee I think they're called Thailand boots they have the block heel so I always like to take into consideration like practicality and comfort if I'm going to spend a lot of money on a luxury purchase I really want to make sure that I'm going to get some wear out of them so I tried to get ones that were a little bit more comfortable with the block heel this is in like the darker like charcoal cool gray i don't know the exact name but i will link these down below for you guys i do not like these shoes the reason why is because they are super hard to get on and off like it's just such a hassle the other thing that i think is that they're really just not that flattering on me and i think it's because of the rounded toe i'm just the kind of person that really enjoys a pointed toe i feel like it, it elongates the leg it's a little bit more classic and a rounded toe is just not my personal style i've worn them maybe four times total since i've gotten them and also this dark gray color doesn't matter 
much like any of my outfits. <laughs> I have had such a hard time trying to style these. I feel like they only go with very specific outfits in my wardrobe. Maybe if I was wearing all white or if I was wearing like a gray coat or something. But anyways, these are definitely a regret for me and there are so many more affordable options for over the knee boots nowadays. The next item that I regret purchasing are the Gucci loafer slides, mules, what are they called? Anyways, I'll put a picture of them on screen. I had the black pair and the pink pair and I actually went ahead and sold them on Tradesy. I was able to pass them on to someone who would get more enjoyment out of them. But the reasons why I did not like them is because I think that I was really just going off of trends. I was just listening to other people and I wasn't taking into consideration my own personal style. Again, with those Stuart Weitzman boots, they're more of a rounded toe and to me, they're just not as flattering as a pointed toe shoe. I don't know why. Anytime I wore them, I just feel like they did not flatter my outfit because they're a rounded toe. Another thing is I got black, which I don't understand why I do that. Like I don't wear a lot of black and they just don't match a lot of my outfits. The pink, I don't know why. I think I thought the pink was going to be a little bit more of like a nude. And so the pink color was more of like a bubblegum pink and that really didn't match my personal style either because I don't like things to be too pink. I still like things to look a little bit more neutral. Stick to my own personal style. I think that's just like the biggest lesson I learned. Just to give you guys a little bit more thoughts on the shoes other than they weren't my personal style. They are very comfortable. However, they do need to be worn and kind of broken in a little bit. Whenever you do break them in, you do get kind of those creases on the top. But I think a lot of people don't really worry about that because that's kind of like the look. They like them to look a little bit more more worn in. Another thing is they're super convenient because they're just like a slip on slide on shoe and they don't have like any logos and then the horse bit clasp on the top is such a classic for that brand that I don't think it's really going to go out of style anytime soon. Okay the last luxury purchase I wanted to talk to you guys about are my Jimmy Choo pointed toe nude pumps with this really gorgeous embellished strap in the front. They're actually a pair of slides so they're super easy to slip on and off and even though they are a little bit higher heel height than my Dior shoes that were so uncomfortable, they're a lot more comfortable to wear because I guess this part is just a little bit wider or something. But I've worn these for several hours to events and I had no problems walking in them. They are just so stunning and I don't see these going out of style. They're still a really classic silhouette of a shoe and the embellished portion just really adds that like little touch of glam to any look so I'm super happy to have these in my collection and I think I will just enjoy and love these for years to come. I hope that that was helpful to anyone who may be considering purchasing any of those. Thank you again to Lily Silk for sponsoring today's video. Like I said, I will list all my favorite pieces from them down below along with my discount code. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I love you guys so much and I will see y'all in my next one. Bye!